before I uh, ask him to come up here and sort of round out this session, I started this session by saying that we were going to have a family conversation. Now, I've been in this epidemic for over 30 something years. And what I found is that when our family has a chance and an ability to speak, in a safe space, we stop that. So I don't do disrespect to nobody from nobody when it comes to my family. There was a time in this epidemic, and I'm you know, always reminded of ACT UP and other groups, and God bless them. They had their place in history and they were necessary in history. They still necessary now. But that doesn't take away from our act up from the colored on the water fountains and the hoses and the dogs that I remember because of the color of my skin. So there was a lesson that was a lesson before there was any acting up around me. And in that lesson, we learn how important it is to let the family have a safe space to have a conversation so we can stop dying. The dying is the dying, whether it's from the disease or the nonsense, it's death. I am so focused on allowing that safe space to happen. Because when you don't, you learn some other very bad lessons. One of those things that I take with me when I, that new that I bring to this, um, this epidemic, tomorrow will be the 10th anniversary of my son's death. My son was 25 years old, shot by the police, with his brains out in his car, unarmed by himself. I still don't know all of that. I was speaking at a funeral from a friend who died from AIDS at the time of his death. Respect is And when you step back with all you think that has happened to you or all you think that can't happen to you and you allow respect to happen, it means that you really do care about the outcome. Given that, there's some things that we have not discussed that have been brought to my attention from very And we will discuss them because they're important things. We're not purposely trying to leave anything out. And in the space of respect, and let me just give you a little history from what I remember many, many years ago, growing up in Harlem, when we used to have days where we had parades of transgender individuals walking down the street in the greatest finery known to man, Fifth Avenue had nothing on them. <laughs> and dresses, and when I was young, you remember Shirley? Hey. Down 7th Avenue, we used to stand there and take notes <laughs> <laughs> to know what to wear and how to do it right. So we are not a community who's absent from any segment of society in our community because we have, we have it all, and we're proud of it all because it's all beautiful. And we've not bashed it, or tried to kill it, or been crazy about it. We're accepting of it all. So within this conversation, I know that there is, there's not been a full discussion about the transgender community. So we have someone here who'd like to say a few words, and I'm gonna for that. So first of all, I want to say a couple things because, Miss Howe, you know the respect I have, 
it is unbound. Um, I think though, all of you could mean as well as you want and get it completely wrong. I'm gonna say though my background because sometimes my light skin makes people forget how black I am. My grandfather is Edward Carter of a &E Baptist Bridge Street Church in Brooklyn. Um, the, the legendary icon of Brooklyn. And I'm looking at a couple of people in the audience here that failed me today because they knew that I'd like to have the conversation to speak to the black women and the black elders in this audience and they left me out of the conversation. I also want to point out how very transgender and connected to AIDS I am. My grandmother, Lorraine Lopez, had three children. Miguel, Angel, and Linda, they're all dead. That was my mother. I watched her connected to machines when I was six years old in the early 90s. They're all dead. I came out as transgender when I was 12. I brought litigation against the New York City foster care system that leaves it as you see it today, with gay group homes all over the city. I did that. I did. I started in HIV prevention at age 13 at a place called the New York Peer AIDS Education Coalition. They taught me everything that I knew and I saved my life. At the same very time, because the history and the convergence of those histories are important to the narrative, I came out as a child of ballroom. The one community that as much as Ms. Howes want to talk about the 7th Avenue parades, you all forgot and you forgot the very important science that comes about when you forget thousands of people in a conversation about trying to stop a disease. And I'm gonna get nitty gritty about the behavior of it now. I'm a post-operative transsexual female who started selling sex when I was 13. Our community does not need pre-exposure prophylaxis. I got tested yesterday. I got exposed to HIV two months ago. I'm HIV negative. A condom, information about your body and sex and direct connection to post-exposure prophylaxis is what will and aims. And the connection, so we, we felt like we had this individual and this individual and her talking about sex and we got real and gritty. We ain't real and gritty. Because the real truth is the on the low gentlemen that we're talking about that we think we've spoken up now and we're gonna address, the ones that really cross barriers and bleed HIV into our females are the ones having sex with transgender women. You want to go ask any psychiatrist? You think the gentlemen that are having sex with other men desire the body of a female transsexual? The fetishized sexual interest of men in the transgender body, titties and a penis, is what you're all forgetting. And the, you know, Janet Weinberg, you should be ashamed of yourself. You, you spoke about. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can I put it in context? Can I put it in context? No. You spoke about. No. no. You are not allowed to do that. No. No. We talked about respect. We talked about a safe space for our community to have a conversation. She was asked to come and have a conversation, and she had a conversation, and you are having. And yours. Yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, I you were having yours. You I were having yours. Okay, well then I will put it in context. Gay men's health crisis speaks about programs like Outstanding Beautiful Brother. The majority, this is a regional <laughs> issue. And the black and Latino gay men that live in New York are a ballroom. Respect is nice, keeping it polite is nice, keeping it to the end of the conversation is nice, but there are programs, there is resources within gay men's health crisis that can be addressed in ballrooms. By the way, this is Ballroom History Month, and I won't let any of you forget it. That the Langston Hughes and the trans people that lived in the 20s and 30s, the gender variant, transgender people, brought our culture to all around the world. Because of ballroom, voting is in Russia now. Go on YouTube. Black and Latino people did that. So I'm going to sum it up and say, and what's the solution? The solution is to never leave us at this disease. That's what we want. See, because Mariah Lopez didn't claim that I had the solutions. What I can say is that we all know as a part of a process, we have to have an inclusive conversation. And if we don't, I don't care how polite and, and respect my elders can be, I'm an HIV negative young people that young person that cares about other HIV negative young people. Very cool. And the real truth is, if I can, because I don't have a degree, I can't tell you, I lived through it almost two decades of being exposed on a daily basis, I'm a sex worker. I saw clients this morning, and I'm still HIV negative. You have to see the politics behind the pharmaceutical companies putting people that want to sell our community pre-exposure. Wait a minute. 
we gotta take HIV medication for the rest of our lives. Truvada costs at least a thousand dollars a bottle. Who's gonna pay for that? We can give our young people a condom, Mariah Lopez to speak to, connect them to the hope of a vaccine. I'm gonna sum it up and say I'm on the community advisory board for the HIV mm -hmm. vaccine trial network out of Columbia University. The thing that kept me wrapping it up and knowing about post-exposure were intelligent medical professionals that pounded me with prevention, which is pennies on the dollar. So a condom, prevention, and an inclusive conversation. Thank you. I'm not sure if you were in junior high, I'm Janae. I'm the acting executive director of NAN. And I would say, I, 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 first of all, I want to address this panel. Can you move over, move over this way? So I can see you. Dwayne um, had a comment. And I, I, I want to say, this panel should not have been on this day. We, and we totally understand that. We totally understand that. We, this panel was not even originally a part of the program at all. But we felt like it was an important conversation that we had to have. When we had the president yesterday, a lot of stuff got shifted. And I, I had a conversation with our panel, panel coordinator, and I said to him, listen, it's going to have to, we have to find time to have this conversation because it's important. I personally did not, so a lot, we came up with the panels. We, we came up with the panels. I did not know enough to know to invite anyone from the transgender community. So I appreciate your comments. I don't want you to think anyone in this room blocked you because we picked them. And, and to be honest, you know, we probably could have could have broadened it up even more. And we had that conversation with Deborah as well. We're not experts in this in this uh, you know category. We're just not. And okay. And we just wanted to make sure that the conversation was had. And I literally, when you made that comment, I started typing an, an, an email to my team saying we gotta move this up. Because this is something that the whole convention needs to hear about, and it's not just the, the part about HIV and AIDS, it's also the part that you were talking about. I'm not sure what ballroom is. And that, excuse my ignorance. Okay, excuse my ignorance. Okay. Right. Okay. And I think I have an idea, but I'm not. I'm sure there are others in the room who don't know. But it, but it, it is about the conversation and, and education, and, and I appreciate you. Um, and, and Deborah, thank you for allowing that to happen. I, when, when you said that, I wanted, I did want to make that comment. And then after your comment, I wanted to just bring it all home. We did this, and 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 for all its deficits, we, you know, we hold us responsible. Thank you, Janae. This, 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 this is this is what this is what a family conversation is. Amen. everybody in the family to say what they got to say. And we understand everybody in the family. So Janae, we want to thank you for having an AIDS panel, period. And understand, as our ancestors and, and Maya Angelou has always said, when we know better, <laughs> 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 